when you're dissecting um, multi-level direct sales and, and network marketing. Now, when we're looking at direct sales, are you also not in favor of of direct sales as well? Like what's the, the drawback no, or? No, okay. and, and, and it's not that I'm not in favor of MLM. Uh, just unfortunately, in general, there's lots of hypes and fake it till you make it and uh, lots of uh, misinformation. And, and, and I fell for it several times and I've met people that they, um, they're they burned. They don't want to look at another uh, opportunity because they lost so much money. They put all their hopes, right? All their... The, the, you know, the, their, their family savings sometimes and all their time and, and they just ended up broker than they were. So it's sad to me that, that that happens to people. Fortunately, I fell so many times, but you know what? I figured I'm going to make it. I mean, I'm going to find something. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to. I, I knew I didn't want to do a nine to five for the rest of my life. I wanted to have time freedom and, and financial freedom. So I kept going. But some some people, they, they get hurt too much and they, they give up and that said um, but there are some good companies out there direct sales um, it, they're great if you like to sell product right if you like to sell product your producer they can yeah they can be great you find a company that has a, a line of product that you like because uh, once again if you're not gonna be a shopper yourself don't try to sell it you're gonna have right. a hard time it's easier to sell something you believe in mm -hmm. and usually you're gonna buy uh, right you buy an amount at wholesale and you're gonna resell it and then whatever the profit is that's what you get to keep uh, usually they can recruit but the incentive is like so, so, so little. Most uh, direct sellers, they don't really go into the recruiting part. They're usually just selling, selling, selling. So nothing against it. I, I have a friend that she makes her own stuff, her own uh, earrings and things, and she sells it. She loves it. Right. That's great. I personally don't like the selling part. I love working with people, training, coaching, presenting, educating. I personally don't like, and I've done it. I've tried it. But to you know, buy a bottle and then go sell it and then collect money and then try to and deliver it and then you gotta buy another one to sell it, collect money, deliver. I didn't like that part. Right, that can be very, very uh, time consuming and costly. I know for for me personally, there's companies that kind of have a component of both. You know, I've been a part of one company where I pretty much had to buy some product so that I could present it to people and then resell it in their in their homes. Um, and then there was a component of once I have the order, I have to go and submit that order back home and the product gets shipped to their house, right? Um, the the issue with that sometimes when you're dealing with a customer, there's, there's a, a, a customer like philosophy here and I forget what they call it, but if you don't get them to purchase it right then and there, if you don't write the order right then and there and submit it right then and there, you can actually lose the sale, even though you got the sale. Like they said, yes, yeah. but then husband came home from work or wife came home from work yeah. and wife said no, husband said no, there's a conflict and the order doesn't go through. So you spent two hours, yeah. you know, that, working with the client. That, you got a yes, you got the order, the address, yeah. the, everything. And the that's, order felt that's it. Why so. sell. That's why they train people in, in when when there is the sale component on MLM or direct sale, they train the people to buy the inventory, have the products, because it is easier to sell it when you have the products at hand. But it's also a lot more expensive. I, right. I, I did a business that the leaders train us like that, right? You gotta have the products, you gotta you gotta give it to your distributors and you gotta have the products for your customer right there, or you're gonna lose the sale. I had as much as fifteen thousand dollars in products in my van at one point. I mean that's a lot of investment. It's a lot of risk, you know. So that's the part that I didn't really appreciate. Yeah, so I would, you know, encourage the audience listening, beware of that because I went through that process and it can be tough to keep up with it. Versus the model that I actually enjoy is the one where I don't necessarily have to carry the product around everywhere I go. Maybe take a couple photos, I can have it pulled up on the internet, the website, whatever. And I'm like, turn the computer, create an account. So if I'm dealing with someone right then and there, if I'm virtual or over the phone, I could be in a Zoom meeting, guiding them on the website, sign up the account, yes. boom, done. 
that's you know a lot easier especially in today's environment where people are more uh, getting used to buying things online now where people don't need to see it as much i mean look at amazon amazon just provides the pro everything you need all the details the customer results customer reviews the description of what you're going to get the dimensions of video showing the product pictures I, I like that a lot because that just saves so much time and you're able to scale that right yeah. to a degree you can actually scale that um, and i always tell my audience that you know when you're looking at network marketing companies what has helped me and you correct me if i'm wrong when i look at the compensation plan i look at uh does the compensation reward producers like or i'll ask the question can i make a livable you know wage or uh, um can i make at least six figures just selling the product Right. Like, is that a possibility um, over, you know, a period of time? If I have repeat customers, like if I build a customer base of, say, 100 customers or 300 customers, how many customers does it take to hit six figures? And right. the, the smaller the amount, the, the better, obviously, because you just do 100,000 divided by 500 customers. That's how much they're purchasing or that's how much commission you would get from each customer. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of repeating that process you know if it's 100 or 150 that's not so bad you know to obtain yeah. like it took me under two years to acquire three to four hundred customers in my financial coaching business and now today four years into it i have you know over a thousand you know roughly 11 yeah. 1200 uh, uh customers which has generated seven figures so if i were to scale that and you know bring on other coaches or uh you know provide other products to some degree i know that as long as i producing um and retain have a customer retention strategy i should be really really good and then i take the profits and i go invested in real estate other small business the stock market right whatever that may be to protect the production that i'm doing